Okay, we're gonna try it again. Trying it again. Woo, I can't be that close. Okay, come on, girl. Are you here, are you here, are you here? Okay. It said to just touch your icon and you're not coming up. Are you there? Oh, come on, Sandy. For some reason, it won't bring you in. I don't know why. Can you ask to join Sandy? Can you guys, ask, Sandy, ask to join. See if it'll let you join. See if it'll let you broadcast, ask, send a live request. Sorry, guys. If you knew how this day has gone all day, you would, you would laugh. <laughs> you would really laugh. Sandy, will it let you send a live broadcast request? <laughs> yes, I'm back, but I'm trying to get my girl on. <laughs> okay, so one of my girls... Sandy Harbor is supposed to be on here with me, but for some reason, my iPad does not want to let her in. I, I don't know why. So, um, we're going to have to shoot for this another night. She has a great project that I want you guys to see, so I'm going to go ahead with this one, and, you know, the ceiling coming down today, it just has been that kind of day. So, um, Sandy, I am so sorry. I don't know what the problem is. Uh, maybe we can figure it out. And Sandy's on with uh, Dixie Bell tomorrow night. And so maybe Thursday night Sandy can be on with me. Because, uh, you know, we've got seven nights. I'm so sorry. Okay, so tonight's project is this. Um, this doesn't look like much to a lot of you guys. But this is one of those things that um, I'm super excited about. And uh, I just can't tell you guys how sorry I am, Sandy. I, I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> Maybe the ceiling coming down. I don't know. So this is my project tonight. And I know you guys are looking at it thinking, what the hey? Well, this is one of those things that when I saw it, as soon as I saw it, I thought, I've got to have it. My husband looked at me the same way that you guys are kind of looking at me. Um, I got two of these big old honking frames with not very pretty pictures in them. The pictures aren't valuable. In fact, the ceiling came down on one of them. So it was, it was super exciting. Um, thankfully, I already had it out. But this is what we're starting with. But I've already messed around with the other one because I thought I had a friend on here with me tonight and I wanted us to have time to do a dual thing. So as you can see, this one looks a little different. I've already taken the glass out, and I guess now that we don't have to have a dual live, I'm going to back this up so you guys can see a little better. Um, I've already taken the glass out of this because this is my beginning. I did start it out with barn red because that's the color that I want to go with. And now for my project, I am not going to use the glass, okay? Um, I, I just don't see a reason to use the glass. So... Um, you can use the glass, though. Here is the glass that came out of it. It's still got part of the ceiling tile on it where the ceiling came down. But if you decide to use the glass, I'm going to chit-chat with you guys how we can use the glass. Uh, be careful because it is sharp. If you're worried about it, wear gloves. So what we're going to do is we are going to make a wall hanging. And this is barn red. And I don't know if you guys can see, but this frame has so much detail it's crazy and you know i don't like for my lives to go on forever so i wanted to get a head start so what we're going to do is we're going to funk this frame up a little so that it has a little bit of personality and you know you could go with a more neutral color but not me i'm not going to go with a neutral color i love red uh we are going to use well here's my stuff 
We are going to use this wreath. I don't know, but the lighting is terrible, but sorry, my ceiling came down and there's not a lot I can do about it. So we're going to use this wreath. I'm gonna see if maybe I get you guys closer. Maybe it shows up better. I don't know, it looks kind of dark to me, but there's only so much I can do. All right, so this is the wreath that we're going to use that we're going to layer this with. And this is the initial that a friend cut me several years ago that I never did anything with that we're going to layer over the top of this. So it'll be three layers deep. And we've got to make everything look the way that we want it to look. And we've got to have our bow and we've got to have everything to make it work. So the first thing I'll tell you is if you're using a frame like this, um, it's better if you don't use one that's wooden because if you use one that's wooden, it gets into a lot of weight by the time you use, by the time you layer everything in. You do not have to use a wreath as your centerpiece. You can use lots of different things. You can use ornaments, whatever. We are giving away free paint again today. Um, tonight, we, we've got giveaway paint for last night, but after the ceiling came down today, it was not a priority, but I will get with you guys on that. So what you can do is you can use your glass if you want a background. So if you want to do something with the glass, of course, clean it if your ceiling came down on it. Um, and what I like to do is I like to make it look like mercury glass. And to make it look like mercury glass, you have a couple of choices. You can use Mirror Effects by Rust-Oleum or Looking Glass by Krylon. Typically what I do when I'm doing it, some people paint, spray the back of it black. I don't like to spray the back of mine black because... I don't mind a little bit of the wall behind it showing, but uh, what I do is I mist my glass lightly with vinegar and water, and then I prefer the mirror effects. I really like the way it looks. So I mist my glass lightly with water and vinegar, and then I spray it with mirror effects, outside preferably because it does have kind of a smell, and it does overspray. And then I take a paper towel and kind of blot it a little to get the look that I'm going for. Now, in my case, I don't mind the wall behind me showing because the wreath is going to cover up where your wire goes across. And the wreath that I've chosen actually is, it covers up the whole inside of this. So I don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to have a big bow up here and my wreath's gonna hang down somewhat in the center of this. And then I'm going to lay, layer my initial over it. So, this is Painted Barn Red by Dixie Belle. And my letter is a 17 inch letter. And it is painted with one of my favorites, collard greens. So, the first thing I would say that you're going to want to do is you can start doing your dry brushing on your frame to kind of get the look that you're going for. And for my dry brushing, I'm going to use Dixie Belle's Bronze Patina. And of course, you know, I'm going to use a little bit of my favorite uh, collard greens because it's the bomb diggity without a doubt. Oh, also guys, I did get the Prima transfers up on the website today. So the sale is still going on and I got a lot of the knob transfers. I got uh, the transfer that I used on the table the last couple of nights. I got... What is it? Floral Home, Fern Woods, Bike Rides. I got a, several of those on there. So if you're interested, go on there and you can find them. All right, so what I'm going to do is you want to highlight all of this detail. And now some of you may prefer to leave your, your piece a neutral color um, because if you leave it a neutral color, it'll match more of a, a year-long decor and stuff. But if you know me, it, it doesn't take that long to repaint it. So if I'm going to uh, have it for Christmas, I want it to look like Christmas. And then if I want it to look year-round after that, I'll just repaint it. I mean, you know, it's not rocket science or brain surgery. It's just paint. So we're going to just throw a little bit of this around here. Kind of get it, get a little bit of this. We don't, I love red, but we don't want it so red. We want it to have a little bit of this detail showing. And it takes literally just the paint that you can have on the brush to get what I want done. And I'm going to move you guys over here so you can see it up close and see what we've done. With just that little bit of 
There you go. Can you guys see what we've done here? We've just made these details stand out, okay? So we've given this kind of an all-over little brush over with the little bit of paint that got into the brush when I did it. And if you want a little more, put a little more. It's totally up to you as to what you want because I just want enough that it gives a little bit of that detail because we're going to go back in with several different colors of gilding wax. You guys remember, we're liking and sharing so that we can get this out there because I want everybody to see how cute this is. And I cannot believe my dual live didn't work. So you guys are going to have to tune back in and see what Sandy is going to do for you on Thursday. Because surely by Thursday we can get our act together. We would have practiced today had I not had water problems here. Okay, so we've gotten this darkened up a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see what we've done, but that is probably about it for the collard greens. Now I want to go back in with a little bit of the um, bronze patina. I think a lot of people think of the bronze patina as something that has to be used with the spray, and that couldn't be farther from the truth. The bronze patina is great all on its own right because it has Great color, great shimmer, without you making it react with the spray. I mean, I love it. Uh, I love it as a standalone kind of paint. Now, I know a lot of people may not like that, but I think it is gorgeous. And then, you know, if you decide later that you want to do something with the patina, add a little bit more, put some spray on it, and boom, shakalaka, there you go. Okay, so... Um, I've got to put this all the way around the outside, so you guys are going to have to be patient with me. You know the way I do things. It's kind of quick and painless. You just kind of drag it all around and get it on there. Um, and I don't want a ton on there, so it doesn't take too long usually. Then I have to go to the other side. Too chubby to lean across there. All right, so here's what we've done here. I'm going to lift it up so you guys can see where we are. I'm going to get this edge because I missed it from leaning across there. All right. So this is what we've got so far. So you guys can see up close. There's where we are with it so far. Now most of it's kind of muted. It definitely is, has not, not any of the shine to it that it did before. And that's what we're going to remedy right now. Now what we're going to do, in fact, I'll tell you what, we've got the bronze on our brush. We're going to kind of hit our, do you guys, can you guys see that this one is, um, it's collard greens. And I want a little bit of the, uh, of the bronze on here just to give it a little bit of a shine. But it, it, I want to keep it kind of muted so far. We are going to make it stand out shortly. But we just want a little bit on here so that it's, it's going to be the bomb diggity when we're done. All right. And I'll tell you, you would think somebody that does what I do would do a lot more of it for themselves. But I do so little for myself that it's almost crazy that I'm actually doing something like this for Christmas. And, guys, I will have one more that I can do for a customer. So, if somebody is interested in this, once we finish and you see what it looks like, I can do one. I have one more picture frame, and it was not involved in the ceiling coming down. So, just so you know. All right. So, here we are with this. And you guys can see what we've done to the frame, and I want you to see what we just did to the initial. Can you see that we just added a little bit of a shimmer to that? So, now what we're going to do is we are going to take our uh, warm gold. And it's our warm gold gilding wax. I don't know if you guys have ever used warm gold gilding wax, but this stuff is amazing. And what we want to do with our warm gold gilding wax is we're going to go back in and we're going to give a little shimmer to our frame that we did have painted gold because the ribbon that I've chosen to use has a little bit of a gold undertone on the edges. So I don't want a gold frame, but I don't mind a little shimmer here and there to kind of pull in the ribbon because, you know, it is the holidays and 
I can't stand glitter, but I don't mind a little bit over the holidays because it seems like everything has glitter on it. So we're going to add just a little here and there. And you'll see it's just a quick rub here and there because I don't want it all over. I just want a little bit to give a nod to my ribbon. And once you see what I've, once you see it together, you'll see what I've done. I've kind of accented it with the dark color, and we're going to go back over it and give it another, uh, a brighter accent with the warm gold gilding wax. And it just kind of, it's like highlights and lowlights for your hair. And you guys see, there's really no method to my madness. Typically, there is not method to my madness. Um, I just, when you're this crazy for this long, it just fills itself up. You know what I'm saying? Every time I say that, I think about that movie where that kid, that's all he kept saying. You know what I'm saying? I think We're the Millers or something was the name of the movie. It just always makes me think of that. That's so crazy. All right. So, we've got to put a little bit more on here. When you're working with a big piece like this, it seems to take forever because I am the queen of impatience. Got to be straight up honest with you. Instant gratification is my game, and I am the queen of it. Okay, so now we've got some in here. Some of it is not taking it as well as I would like, which means after I get off with you guys, I may dig a whole wall back in here again because I want it to look the way I want it to look. And I don't want to keep you guys hanging on here all night because that's not exciting. All right, so we got to go up this back side because when you're working a piece, if you don't work it all the way around, when you step out from behind it, you're going to be like, holy cow. I'm kind of dyslexic, you know? I didn't even see that I didn't work that piece. And when you move around, you'll see places that you missed. Even if you're working the whole piece, you're going to see places that you've missed. All right, so this is where we are so far. I want you guys to see we have gone from a gold frame to a red frame that has colored greens and warm gold gilding wax as well as bronze on it. And I'm going to add one more little thing. Anastasia Gilding Wax is kind of a red. And I want a little hit of that here and there because it's just the bomb diggity. I love it. And we're going to hit a little bit on our beautiful collard green H because it needs a little red here and there because it makes it look so gorgeous. If you guys have not tried Anastasia Gilding Wax or the Turquoise Teal, if you stayed with the basic color, shame on you is all I can say. Shame, 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 shame. So now we're going to take one more thing. We're going to put our uh, Black Gilding Wax because I love a little bit of drama on my pieces and it's not a whole ton of Gilding Wax, but I do like to go back over even though I put the gold on to brighten it, I do like to take that black and swing it back around. And you don't want to hit every bit of it, but you do want to kind of bring it around. Now, if you get too much of the black, bring your gold back out. Swing it back over. There's no right or wrong with this whole thing, okay? It's totally what you like. If you're doing it for a customer, totally what they like. But most of the time, it's totally what you like. And... We've got to put a little bit of gold with our red and our bronze on our collard green ale because we want this ale to have a body of a dark color, but we want it to have the highlights of a light color. We want it to have a little bit of a shimmer because otherwise it just blends right into our red. And that is so not what we're going for. And if you make sure and drag your brush along the edge, it will kind of outline the, uh, the initial that you're using. 
if you're using a mitchell, but like I say, you can hang uh, lots of little um, ornaments. You can put a, a stuffed animal. You can put a nativity scene. I mean, you can put whatever you want in there. But this is what our H now looks like. Our H has almost a metallic feel to it so that it is all set up. Okay, so now we have a red frame and we have a wreath and we have our initial and now we have to tie the bow. Okay, so we gotta move some of this stuff out of the way. And again, the colors that I chose may not be your color choices, but they are my color choices. I love collard greens on just about half of everything. And barn red has been one of my favorites since the day it came out. So, there is that. All right, so now, once we are ready, I have chosen some ribbon that is going to go on my piece. And yes, I do know my red is brighter than my red, but again, don't care. All right, so we are going to grab my Bodabra. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so... I don't know if you guys have used a bow dabber to tie bows with, but it makes life so much easier. You can do it by hand, great. Um, bow dabber just takes all the guesswork out of it. And what we're gonna do is, our hanging ribbon is going to be here, and it is going to be a little long so that we can wrap it over the back. Now you can put it underneath the bottom, but I'm gonna wrap it over the top. Oops, sorry about that. So we're gonna cut our hanging ribbon there and set it aside. And then we're gonna start with our basic ribbon. Um, this is our bottom ribbon. And if you guys have not used the bow dabra, it's, like I say, it is the bomb diggity. Um, you put your ears in, and if your ribbon is like mine, it's wider, and it's only printed on one side, okay? So because it's only printed on one side, you put it in and you twist. Put it in and you twist. Your first one, you want to kind of hold it up and make sure that it measures about the same. And then you make three or four ears that same depth. And then you go in one or two. It depends on how big you want your bow to be. Um, I want this one to be fairly large because I've got a really big frame. And I've got a fairly large wreath and then I've got an initial. And when you're layering, you just want to make sure you've got enough layers to, to make it festive, you know? I mean, one chip's out on the ribbon, right? Okay, I know this is boring, but this is just part of it. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to set you a little closer so that maybe you can see the way the ribbon goes. And basically, you're just twisting and pulling in, okay? I know this is not something that you guys sign up for somebody that teaches painting, but... That's why I told you, we are going to do something a little out of the box tonight. And you want to bring this one in just a hair so it's a little smaller so that the bow is graduated. All right. And this is so much easier than holding it in your hand. i got to be straight up honest with you people. These things are amazeballs. They're inexpensive and they're, they keep you from having so much stress. Okay. You're going to cut that and you're going to press that down. And then we're going to move to our next ribbon. Our next ribbon is the Merry Christmas with the gold and the red. And yes, I know it doesn't match my red frame, and no, I don't care. Because it says Merry Christmas, and I love it. All right. This one is a lot flimsier, so it's much more difficult to work with. We're going to do it right on. And you can make as many ears of each one that you want. And I call them ears because that's what they kind of remind me of when you're pulling the bow across. It just, whichever number of ears you like. And, like I say, this can be repurposed. Maybe you want to go with a neutral color and be safer than I am, and I say more power to you. Because you can always, after the holidays, replace this with a nice boxwood wreath. And you would like it maybe even better with a boxwood wreath. Uh, I like something very festive because I am a connoisseur of Christmas. I love Christmas. All right. So we're going to pull this last one in a little. 
All right, so there's two of our ribbons, and this is our third ribbon. Our third ribbon is this one. Yep, um, a lot of people get concerned with Victorian and this and that and the other. Me, I don't care. I just like the detail on it. As a painter, it has great detail, and I like to mix rustic and Victorian every chance I get. It's kind of like industrial and farmhouse. Uh, it, it mixes beautifully. A lot of people would say, eh, that's not for me, and that's why we all get along so well, because you can appreciate everybody's differences. It makes it great. So we got two more ears, and then we're going to have our bow is ready. And then you've got to decide, do you want tails on your bow or not? And if you do, do you want them to be angled or do you want them straight? I mean, there's a world of things that you can get caught up in. I don't get caught up in it. I just do whatever I like and move on. Okay, so we've got all of our ears done. And our last one, I like to leave a little bit of a tail on it because I wrap it back through once the bow is tied. All right, so if you've had a bow dabra before, you know that all you have to do is, well, you take your little shimmy here and you press down because that gets your bow nice and tight. And then you take the two tails and bring them up through the loop and there is your bow. Pull it nice and snug, but don't pull it too tight because even though this nice little neat stuff has wire in it, it's breakable. I've broken them before because I used a little too much force when I pulled it. And I like to put my little loop over there as I pull in my last little notch. And then I tie it up. All right, now what you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to pull all of your bow out so that you've got your base in the back and you build from there. Okay, I'm going to move the bow dabra. All right, so now we've got our little ribbon. And now keep in mind, the ones that are a little flimsier, they're just a little harder to move out, but you've got wired ribbon. So if you work with it a few minutes, it's pretty easy to get it the way that you want it to be. And I like multiple colors in my bows. I mean, multiple colors and textures are what make pretty bows. So you may like it and you may not, but I like a lot of variety and a lot of color and if the more texture I can get, the better. I, I'm, that's just me. I don't like anything that's too neutral, too boring. Neutral and boring are the same to me. All right, so this is our bow that we have. And we are going to add it to our wreath. All right, let's move our initial. All right. So, if you'll notice, when I put together the wreath, because I didn't think I would have time to do it tonight, I put together the wreath so that it sits directly on here. I made sure that it would fall the way that I wanted it to. And we already have our hanging ribbon. And I already know where I want it to hit my wreath. So, we are going to make sure we've got the right side out, because I'm notorious for doing crazy mess like that hanging it on the wrong side, and you have a couple of choices here. You can hang it lower, but I want mine to kind of hang in the middle, and then I'm going to tie it back here. Don't get your hanging wire for the frame in your wreath hanger, because if you do, then that's going to cause you some headaches later, okay? You're welcome to staple it if you'd rather staple it. Typically, I just tie mine off and cut the, the legs off. All right, so now we've got our, our bow. And we're going to put our bow up top. And we're going to put it up here with our hanging. Now, when you're putting your bow on, you may choose to have tails. You may choose to not have tails. And I'm not going to have tails on it right now, but that doesn't mean that later I won't add them. Because it's a real simple thing to do, just to go back in and tie those into place. And now I'm going to fluff this bow out a little because it's not doing exactly what I want it to do, which is not unusual, especially after the day that I've had today. I thought I was going to be late getting on tonight. I was keeping grandsons and small group ran late and I had to move the live to late. Okay, so now we've got that and now we've got to worry about our initial. 
and we are going to put our initial at an angle because it's me. Because I don't like things straight at all, ever. It's too boring. Way, way, way too boring. All right. So, when you're doing this, you're going to want to use green wire because no matter what color you paint your letter, it typically does not show up. And you can tuck it in to the greenery and it won't show up at all, okay? And I'll tell you, normally after I tie mine up, I go back in and touch up the wire anyway with paint so that you can't see it because I'm that person. I am so, so, so that person. All right. Well, can't even find my own wire. <laughs> okay, there we go. This is what happens when you do lives and you're frazzled. Okay, so I'm gonna back you guys up so you can see my whole messy workspace. And I'm gonna drop you down a little so that you're hanging even. All right, so just to remind you, this is what we started with, okay? This fabulous piece of artwork is what we started with or one just like it. Its mate is in the trash. And this is what we ended up with. And you know, I don't like how low that's hanging. We're gonna raise that up a hair. There we go. See, that's what happens when you're doing a live frazzle. You just have to monkey with things. Thankfully, I have not cut the legs off of it yet. Because once I cut the legs off, there you go. There is our ribbon and our initial. So, I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but that is what we are doing for our craft. If you have somebody that is special to you, that may be what you want to do for them for Christmas. Um, like I say, I'll probably fucks with this bow a little and I may end up adding some tails on here or something, but it's a way to take something that somebody didn't really care about. I think I picked these up at a thrift store or something, but it's a way to take something that somebody did not care about and make it so that it is a decoration. So you guys can see what my frame looks like. I will take a picture of it. In fact, let me see if I can hang it on the wall. I don't know that I can hang it on the wall so you guys can see it. There's some little screws hanging up here, but <laughs> I may end up dropping it in the floor. We'll see. <clears throat> and of course, it doesn't want to hang on the wall. Okay, it is not hanging straight, but it's hanging. So I'm gonna spin you guys around and raise you up and there you go you can see what it looks like after it's finished and it's hanging on the wall i may tie a bigger bow because i really think that bow needs to be bigger or have tails or something but you guys get the idea and i really appreciate um you guys tuning in let me see if i can drop you down a little so you guys can see better um I used barn red and uh, bronze and collard greens as well as, well, let's see. <laughs> it's still not going to do it. Stupid thing. Okay, there we go. Now you can kind of see it. Um, I used barn red. I used collard greens. I used bronze patina, and I used um, gold gilding wax, black gilding wax, and Anastasia. And then on the initial, I did the uh, collard greens, the Anastasia, and the gold gilding wax to give it kind of a metallic look. So, I hope that you guys can see what I did. Um, 
and hopefully, I don't know, maybe the ceiling won't come in tonight, knock it off the wall. I may take it home with me so I can make sure it doesn't happen again. But here are the remnants of what used to be in the frame that the ceiling fell on. So, thanks for watching tonight, guys. And I appreciate everything. It's not hanging straight still. Um, I appreciate everything. If you guys are looking for paint, we do still have the special through tonight. I did finally get the crazy transfers on there today. For some reason, it wouldn't take it. But I appreciate you guys tuning in, and I will do a picture of it finished tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a nice evening.